Yeah. I'm on top. Does everyone have a tank uniform and a gas mask oh, and I G-Mask? have a shotgun hotel. Um, for anti-sticky. Anti-sticky. No. <laughs> put, that away, put, put that away. All right, so make sure you... Unorthodox tactics. All right, so standard loadout. First part of trading, standard loadout for a tankery crew. Uh, depends on your position. Most positions, however, you'll have uh, roughly 65 B-mats, four gas mask filters, spare, uh, a hammer, pistol if you want, but you can put that away for more B-mats. Um, and that should be your standard loadout for the gunner and the driver. For the commander, you need to sacrifice some B-mats or maybe even some filters because you're going to be dying a couple times due to stray shots. You're going to need to sacrifice that for more pistol ammunition. Now you can choose between revolver, pitch gun, or the standard pistol. I personally prefer the standard pistol because it has more range than literally every other secondary available, but uh, just choose one of the three uh, as a commander. Make sure you bring like five clips of ammunition because you generally go through a lot if you're using it well. Any questions about loadout? Yes, I have a question about loadout. You said 65 spare beam rides. If you can pack more, do you pack more? Yes. Yeah. 65 you... was like a very low number. I carry a mammon, I carry a bonus pistol. and a radio, and I can carry Why do you carry a mammon? If you drop your pistol, you can carry up to 95 BMATs yes. in the tank uniform. Uh, I guess that is something I did forget. <laughs> it's important to remember uh, drivers, it's essential you have a radio. Commanders, yeah. it's not yeah. as essential, but it's still best. Gunner, it doesn't matter. In fact, you should never yeah. be looking in your map if you're a gunner. A gunner, gunner is always looking down the sights for threats up ahead. Correct. I've got you in my sights. Always, also always carry extra B mats in your tank if you have the slot available. The it is harder to come by B mats than it is to come by fuel on the front lines, and you'll need to consistently repair your tank very often, so you need to keep those B-mats on hand at all times. You'll need binos. So, yeah, commanders also well, need binos. That is one thing I also forgot. So. I have binos. I just forgot why I need a pistol if I have binos. Oh, yeah. By the way, need a Actually, pistol. commanders should have a pistol and binos and switch between them as needed. Correct. Particularly at night if you are if you need to fend off infantry, switch to your pistol. Very if correct. You could if you could throw grenades from the commander spot, would you? No, I but... totally would. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a meme. I'd love it. It would waste too much slots, but um, if you could, maybe. Uh, maybe you could have a dedicated uh, grenadier on the back of a tank. Bring me closer to near troll white ash. Time for lecture time for each position. Um, Yay. Yay. We'll start with the driver. Uh, the driver is the most important role of the tank. You are the one who controls everything. You are basically the commander if there is no commander. Um, the driver is required to maintain the tank. So it's always your job to make sure the tank is locked. It's always your job to make sure the tank has enough fuel. I just heard that. I know it's <laughs> Okay. Crazy. It is your job to make sure the inventory is also good, but that could technically be going to the gunner. Uh, just, it is your job to maintain the tank, make sure it's parked in the right spots, make sure it doesn't get stolen, and to just generally baby the tank uh, whenever you're not in combat. Uh, when you're in combat, however, your job is to listen One to second. your commander. Left, left, left. Is to listen to your commander. Um, he will give instructions and tell you about threats that you cannot see. However, because you can uh, the, because the commander is taking care of threats you cannot see, it is your job to focus on what you can see. This means that you have to look everywhere, 360 degrees around you. You have to constantly stay vigilant from every angle. You've got to monitor the infantry around you, make sure that uh, they're in a good uh, there's a good volume of infantry around you protecting you. And you've got to uh, be vigilant for sticky rushers from behind or the sides. You're going to be the only one who can focus on that. The gunner can't focus on that, and the commander has tunnel vision. You've got to be the one who focuses around your tank, and you have to be the one to understand what's going on around you. And if a commander tells you to push, you have to be the one, first one to say, 
no, because there's not enough infantry to push. You've got to look around you, you've got to be... You've got to understand your situation and all your support and make sure everything is there so that you don't kill your tank, basically. Because at the end of the day, you're the last... You're the first and last line of defense for your tank. And your commander often just cannot see what's going on around you. And then your gunners always looking down sights. It is your job to monitor your situation, keep an eye on everything happening around you, and make sure that you're in the best spot you can possibly be in to prevent your own death or to prevent others from uh, flanking you. Any questions about driving? No. Oh. This is one of the most noobish mistakes that I see is uh, drivers who are just not aware of their surroundings. You have to be aware, because no one else in your tank is going to be aware. You have to watch for enemy sticky rushers. You have to watch to make sure you have enough infantry support. You, uh, and if you don't, you have to make the decision to pull your tank back to where you do have support. Even if that means going behind defenses. At the end of the day, your commander is not the boss of you. You're the boss of the commander. You decide what happens to the tank, and if you don't feel comfortable pushing into a s situation, it is your job to uh, basically assert your authority as driver and say, no, we're not doing that. I guess that's one thing I didn't describe about, uh, about the driver. Yeah, driver, your job is also to make sure that nothing's behind you, so in case of emergencies, you can press your S key and uh, you will not die instantly or get stuck. Uh, and no. And feel free to run over infantry uh, as well if you're a driver, because no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if they're in your, if they're they have to move around you. So if they're in the way, just let them die. So you just confirmed that you are a planet side player. <laughs> Don't be afraid to run them over if they're in your way. But it's also the infantry's job to remain to make sure they're not behind your tank. Uh, I will say, uh, if you're a driver, you could at least give the infantry the common courtesy to say, "Get out from behind the tank." Uh, and most of the time they'll oblige, instead of just straight up running around, running them over. Uh, it is also important for the driver. This is actually one thing that I forgot to mention with the driver thing. The map is your primary method of information if you're the driver. So if you're sitting back and you're not exactly pushing or not doing much at the moment, always check your map. Look at your map, see what's happening on the front line, see the colonial troop movements, try and figure out whether you're in a safe spot or not. This is a very valuable tactic. All right, well, the gunner position. There are many types of diff uh, different guns. Each have their own variety. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the 40 millimeter as it stands, since it's the most commonly used and the most common. Um, yeah, he's just going to have to catch up with us. Let's just get moving. So the 40 millimeter gun, your objective is to stare down sights in front of you. Uh, since the enemy will usually always be in front of you, it is your job to look in front of you. You'll be able to see further than the driver, so you'll be able to see threats coming at you before the driver will. Uh, be sure to communicate this uh, to your driver if there are any threats in the area uh, in front of you, so the driver can understand what's going on. Um, the 40mm gun, generally, the first thing you want to do is shoot tanks, and shoot them in the tracks specifically. Detracking an enemy tank will put them into a situation where they cannot move, and then you can easily kill them. Uh, so generally, you always want to aim for the tracks. However, if you try to aim for the sides, and they're like you're facing each front on, uh, they're going to deflect pretty quickly. So you want to face them. It, so you want to face it like head on for the most likely chance to penetrate the armor. Otherwise, it'll just deflect off and it'll do nothing. Wait, 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 wait! Angling works in this game. Yes, uh, they added a. Um, oh. I didn't know that. They added angling armor actually a couple while ago. Um, That's why you can still bounce shells when your armor is shit. Mm -hmm. So a percentage, so the percentage of penetration determines on the angle that you're shooting at. So if you, so what you want to do is usually when you're in a head-on engagement, just hit the hit the front. It may have more armor than the sides, but you'll not be deflected instantly because of the deflection tables. But if you're hitting a target from the side, always try to hit, like, ed end on, otherwise you'll be in serious issues. Uh, other than that, as the gunner, you're responsible for also monitoring how much ammunition your tank has. Um, 
So you want to make sure that your gun never runs out. Um, alternatively, depending on the gun that you're using, you may want to shoot infantry. Uh, in doing so, there's a um, order of engagement uh, for for your te for your gunner's position when facing against infantry. Uh, first thing you shoot is anything that can threaten the tank's life. So any AT, any uh, ATRs, any sticky rushers, or satchel runners, if you get one of those. I had one of those once. Uh, your job is to shoot them first. If there's any infantry just without question that can threaten the tank, always shoot them. That is just, just do that. I guess next I could describe, after you take care of anyone with AT um, equipment that could threaten your tank, then you shoot next any person who can threaten the infantry around you. So these are usually HMG positions uh, or other machine gun positions. Any infantry that's particularly nasty for the infantry around you to take out. That's your second um, priority targets. Then lastly is just general infantry or structures. If there's anything in the way, just delete it. Um, Kill medics first. Um, can I add? Um, Go ahead. Prior, oops, uh, Alongside the HMGs and like major threats to infantry, I would go for medics and particularly yeah. entrenched infantry. Correct. Yeah, there if you is... can kill multiple people in the trench, that's good. There is a way you can hit people in trenches, even if they're like sitting inside the trench, by firing the cannon uh, right above their heads. Uh, the splash damage will kill whoever is directly beneath it. That's very difficult to do because you have to fire it at max range while aiming beyond your target, so it blows up, ex explodes above yeah. them, and that requires Call a lot. Call that of... air bursting. Yeah, air bursting. It requires a lot of coordination though with the driver and the gunner, so it's more of an advanced technique. Uh, so then, so yeah, so generally that's what you want to do when you're gunning, and that's your order of priority. I will still say that. HMGs should be a higher priority than people in trenches or medics uh, because they're a direct threat to your infantry a lot more than just a medic. Uh, any questions about um, how to gun? Tell them not to shoot um, bunker AT. Yeah, don't shoot bunker AT. Whatever you oh, yeah. do. Uh, well, unless shooting ordered bunker to. AT depends on the terrain. Yeah, unless you're ordered to, don't, don't shoot them. At all, just like uh, two days ago, I had um, sitting uh, at the cliffside. We could shoot the a bunker piece with AT in it. It fired back, hit the rock instead of us, killing uh, killing the infantry instead. Yeah, I'm Pretty going fun. to say still, just don't, just don't shoot it. Yeah. Uh, unless mm -hmm. ordered to. The commander usually will have a bright idea, so you shouldn't. I'll be. You shouldn't have to. So just don't take it upon your own initiative to do so unless you're certain you can destroy it in one shot. Other than that, Sorry. there is one other thing I would like to mention. Um, if you have different guns or are using different cannons, say you have an HMG, you can technically suppress a rifle pill uh, ATR rifle pillboxes with machine guns. So if you say have like a um, infantry support tank or a um, uh, or a Spitfire. Or two, actually. You need two for a Spitfire. Um, did I say Spitfire? Kingspire. Uh, yeah. If you had two Kingspires, you can suppress an AT um, pillbox. Or ATR pillbox, so you won't get shot by it. That's a good way of destroying structures. Um, other than that, you'll have multiple different types of guns that will do multiple different types of things. 68mm penetrates armor like nothing, like it was paper. Uh, 40 millimeter is just your standard. It's just your standard explosive rounds. Um, you know, HMGs are HMGs. Um, what other kind of machine guns are there, or guns on tanks? I think that about covers it, actually. Oh, uh, I'd like to add, in, with regard to AT bunkers, um, that the the AI, the retaliation AI for the bunkers, is shared across like the connected grid of bunker tiles um, not, not trenches so if you if you shoot at a rifle garrison but that You're rifle garrison is connected by a, if the rifle garrison is connected by a bunker to an AT garrison that AT garrison will fire back at you teach them how to decrew a field gun 
Ah, yes. Uh, decrewing a fuel gun. This should have been the gunner section. Um, you can decrew a field gun if you face, say, a smelter, which is going to rip your tank to shreds if you ever face, which is something you should avoid altogether. Uh, in order to decrew any field gun, for that matter, you need to angle the gun to the side and shoot right next to the person. Uh, doing so, the splash damage will do damage to the driver or the gunner, and if you're lucky, you'll be able to get the kill. Uh, it's very difficult um, to do, but you can do it, and you can get the kill that way. Uh, and you crew a field gun. Once that happens, just volley fire it and kill it, because that smelter is going to tear you to shreds if you don't. If you're facing a field gun, the the dry, or the if the field gun's facing you, the gunner's going to be on your left, and the driver's going to be on your right. Knocking out either will put the gun out of action, but try to shoot for the gunner if you can. Uh, if you can't, the driver's just fine. Uh, Alright, then I guess we'll move on to the commander. Uh, the commander roll. Uh, you are not in charge of the tank, the driver is. You can only give instructions to the driver. The driver has the w is the one who has to decide whether to commit or not. Um, your job as commander is to see everything and to make sure the tank stays alive for as long as possible. Uh, it is also your job to spot opportunities. So if a tank armor is pushing or if there's... Um, if a tank armor is pushing, then you need to, uh, well, if it's falling back, then you tell your driver to move forward. If a tank is push, tank armor, if enemy tank armor is pushing, you tell your driver to fall back. Usually you just don't want to engage fa uh, uh, tank lines head on. So as a commander, your job is to spot threats and spot opportunities in order for the driver and the gunners to exploit. So it is also your job to be able to look around find holes in the enemy defenses or in the enemy tanks, find alternative routes for your tank to take. Uh, as the commander, you're the only one who can see that, so you have to communicate directly with the driver and with the gunners about alternative pathways, ways to go. Most of the time, you'll spend your time just sitting there doing nothing, because there will either be a line of tanks in front of you that you don't want to engage, or there will be uh, just nothing to fight or too much enemy infantry to push or it will be nighttime. Uh, in these instances you always want to stay stationary uh, in safe locations where you can quickly uh, pull back. As for that, the commander also has another secondary role that he has to play. Uh, Anti-sticky rusher um, role. Uh, he has to use his pistol whenever infantry gets close to the tank uh, to you know, keep them away from the tank. Uh, your job is meant to keep the infantry away from the tank, not necessarily kill anyone. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to shoot to kill. You just have to shoot to, to ward them away. Uh, it never works for sticky rushers. They'll all, they'll always just, um, have Terrible to fall. Oh no. Uh, it doesn't it's work for sticky, it doesn't work for sticky rushers. You'll always have to shoot the sticky rusher, uh, to kill because you can't actually, uh, Three players. Well, okay, stop. that's not that bad. They won't stop if you shoot them. So. Seven players. So yeah. you have to whip out your pistol and shoot anyone who gets near to the tank. Um, I find that the standard pistol is the best to do this because it has the most range of all the pistols. However, the revolver is also viable. It has slightly more damage. It's like a, uh, it's like a rifle, but with significantly shorter range. Uh, and then the SMG, or the pitch gun, is basically a, a very poor man's machine gun. It's kind of crap because it just doesn't do enough damage to kill people a and its range is Art. to the point where sticky rushers can get in and will start sticking your tank right when you're in range to shoot them. So It's only so, meant to scare people. Yeah, the pitch gun is more a scare tactic uh, and you can never scare sticky rushers. So, I, I find the pistol is the best option. Uh, the pitch gun is perfect when you're a medic. Yeah, uh, but not necessarily for a tank commander. The commander will also have to keep their eyes peeled, they'll have to look around, make sure that no infantry is flanking the flanking the tank, uh, don't have tunnel vision, don't just keep your eyes fixated on the um, front lines, because not only is that not only will you not see sticky rushers coming up to flank you, but you'll also not be able to see alternative holes that you can exploit in the enemy's defenses or tanks that are flanking you, which is often something that happens so if you're a commander you have to keep vigilant you have to make sure that everything around you is... You clearly know everything around you, and you don't just leave that to the driver. Because it may be the driver's um, job to have its have good peripheral vision, but you also have to make sure that the people who are attacking you aren't tanks, because the driver can't know that, and you'll 
most likely to get Alpha Strike before uh, the driver will know that there's even a tank flanking. Uh, any questions about how to command? Not really. No questions. I have uh, one, one thing to add for this as well. Um, if you're going into combat, as, if you're the commander and your tank is going into combat and you're, you feel that you're in danger, like from machine gun fire, snipers, whatever, just close your hatch. Press E, close your hatch. Yes, press E, close your hatch. Hide also, while you're under fire. Also, while we, are so later. while we are talking about this, when there is a snow falling around you, wear the winter uniform. You can freeze one outside the hatch. Oh yeah, that's true too. Yep. Also on a motorcycle and the vehicle going there. So, good to wear a parka if you're the commander in the winter time. Very, very true. The next part of the lecture, which is general tank combat. Um, there are two types of tank uh, drivers, uh, because they're the ones who decide. There's the aggressive driver uh, and the cautious Bill driver. Cosby. Yeah, <laughs> Bill, Bill is the aggressive uh, driver. Uh, both are viable. Um, the aggressive driver will generally push forward. Um, and unless they're experienced, they're more than often lose the tank uh, because of their aggressive pushes. Um, the cautious driver, however, will will be cautious and will not put themselves into dangerous situations, which will generally make the tank last longer. But you'll get more kills more and do more damage if you are a aggressive driver. However, just because you're not aggressive does not mean you're not doing damage. One of the best things you can do for a tank is just to be on the battlefield. The presence of a tank scares people more often than not, and if you're on the battlefield, enemy infantry will just stay away from you. They won't even bother coming close to you unless they're veterans who know better. So your just mere presence, even if you can't do anything to the infantry, your mere presence will just stop any infantry from advancing. So it's important to remember that on the battlefield you are powerful psychologically so I find that a cautious commander can do a lot of work just by holding a line with a tank um, again both are viable if you want to be more aggressive do more damage do more destruction that is a completely viable method but I'm more the cautious driver who prefers the presence and prefers to only take kills that I can reach um, what what you generally do in combat is you push forward you push forward you push forward you push forward when your gunner has a line of sight and they can hit the target, they will fire their shot. Once they do, you as the driver immediately reverse. Just reverse, because there's nothing more you can do on the front line other than soak shots, which is something you don't want to do. So just reverse and allow your gunner to uh, reload. Now it's a good practice for the gunner to say when they fully reloaded, that way you can stop backing up and push back up again uh, as the driver. But that's generally one of the more advanced techniques that you want to do. You don't want to just sit there and take shots while your gunner's reloading. It's important to fall back after you've shot uh, the first shot, and then you can push forward with the tank after the gun's reloaded and fire off the next volley and then push ba fall back. So it's very back and forth, but it is the best way to prevent yourself from just soaking shots, which is not something you want to do. Other than that, there's also something known as tank lines. Uh, Generally, because flanking is so unbelievably risky, uh, the general form of tank combat is through tank lines. It's where a bunch of tanks just line up in a line, they push. The uh, side with more tanks and a longer line has a superior alpha strike and will generally be the side that's pushing, where the side with the uh, least amount of tanks will be on the defensive, seeking to conserve the number of tanks they have and make sure that they don't get overrun. Uh, and will generally sit in defensive positions more more likely than not and be very cautious and not try to lose anything because if they lose, lose a single tank that's a lot of, that's a huge loss compared to the enemy tanks um, more aggressive when you have more tanks on a front line uh, more cautious when you have less tanks on a front line that's generally how line combat works and it's and it built depends on the players too yeah it's built on um, it is built on the alpha strike so the first f bombardment because you're having like so many tanks it's like five shells going on at once that's the important part now the the most difficult part of line combat is communication you have to talk with your other tanks around you and you have to tell which one of them to target like which tank do you target to get all five of your shots 
on. I have never been able to get an entire line to focus on one tank. That's just not something that I've been able to get. However, I have been able to get several tanks on the line to focus fire on one tank. You also need to communicate with the commanders of the other tank, tell them, hey, I think it's a good time to push. Or if they say, like, I think it's a good time to push, you have to stand up, look out there as a commander, check the front lines and see, mm, maybe there's not, maybe this isn't a good time to push. Like, maybe there's an eat that they don't see hiding around there, or a um, smelter. You have to communicate with your other tank columns and tell them, that may not be a good idea to push, or, yeah, I think we should push, and push with them. Um, communicating with your uh, line is an essential part of being able to push or to hold a position. Uh, and it's important that you, again, communicate. So, line combat is the primary method of assault. Uh, however, you can flank. It is very dangerous, but you can do it. Uh, don't use the silver hand to do it. That's a death sentence. Uh, silver hand just cannot do it. Neither can a widow. Well, silver hand goes in straight lines. <laughs> Correct. Uh, a widow also can't do it. Don't bother. That thing does not have the does not have the ability. Um, the only thing that could flank is the flank tank or any collie tanks that you manage to capture. Um, the flank tank light or tanks, the, outlaws. Yeah, light tanks. That, that's also an option. So the light tanks and the outlaws. They're the only tanks you can really flank with. Now flanking is actually pretty effective. No one sees it coming uh, because no one does it. It's people fight in lines. They don't fight in flanking maneuvers. So you can often catch. Uh, enemy tanks or enemy tank columns completely off guard by just going around them. Uh, so it's a very viable strategy to flank. However, it is very difficult. Infantry can chew you apart if you are not careful about it. So if you try to flank around, the infantry will just hit you with AT and you won't even be able to get close to your targets. Um, alternatively, if the tanks see you, they can quickly turn. And they can quickly turn to face you, so that surprise is the most um, is the most necessary part. If you don't hit them with surprise, they will turn around and they'll chew you to shreds. Uh, generally, warden tanks are slower than colonial tanks, so if you try to get away and they see you, uh, they'll also chase after you and they'll always outspeed you and kill you. So you'll want to only use the outlaw because um, of its boost if you're going against, say, like spathas or mass production tanks. Uh, other than that, flanking is also very difficult because you have to consider just structural AT in the area. You can't, if you're flanking, you can't deal with that, like at all. Uh, because you don't have numbers, you can't really deal with any anti-tank structures that exist in the game. So you'll just have to, um, you have to go in and hit in areas where. So flanking can only be done in open fields where there's no defenses. Like even if there's just an ATR pill, um, pillbox, the moment that thing goes off. It alerts everyone, and you've lost your surprise. So, everyone will then go Holy after you. Smokes, all the tanks here, will, my dudes. All the tanks will then uh, come out of the line and go after <sighs> you and kill you. So, flanking is viable, but it is very difficult to pull off, and it has to be in the right conditions. Also, I'd like to add: um, if you're engaging as part of a tank line, um, probably not best to like hard reverse like forever. Just kind of back up so that you're like a tank length behind the rest of your line, let your gunner reload and then push forward again, as long as your line is still like engaging the enemy. Yeah. If other if your other tanks are peeling off to retreat as well, then you wanna, you know, be alongside them and retreat too. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this is also an important thing to talk about line combat. Um even if you don't agree with a line when it's pushing and you say you want to stay back to the defense, don't do that. Stay with the line. The line will save your life, and even if you don't like the idea of pushing right at that moment, you have to stay with the line, because that is where all the power of a tank column is in the column. So you can't separate the column. So it's a good idea to, even if one pushes, unless all the other tanks decide not to push, uh, if one tank, if but if the rest of the tanks push, you, you can't stay back. You have to go with the line. Especially if you're in the middle. Um, if you're off yes. on the sides, uh, you can kind of play it cautious and let them poke ahead of you, and you kind just kind of stay there in reserve. Make like it's so it's like a V formation. Yeah, eh, that's difficult to do. 
if the enemy if the enemy then starts to push your line back you can get shots to like covering fire but when they start to push forward make them think twice about you know hard pushing you yeah v formations and any form of formations are very difficult to do pull off because of terrain or defensives that are built in the area mm. um so generally i just say line but if you can pull off a formation then do so uh very difficult like i said so it's questionable I just think of it as a caution thing. Like if, if they say, yeah, we're going to do a push and you're off on the side and you're not sure about that push, you like follow with them, but stay a little bit back so that you're like a reserve tank. Yes. Um, another thing to say, if some, if one tank does push up, don't feel pressure to push up with them. If it's like one tank out of the whole line, it's, it most likely that guy's just an idiot. Don't, don't listen to him and don't follow him. If the rest of the line is just staying still, uh, while one just goes off, um, just let him. Uh, if he he could be even be doing his own thing, so don't be encouraged to follow tanks that are just doing their own thing that you don't agree with. Uh, but if there's a whole line that says we're going to do this, you've got to follow the line. I have experienced a lot of players like saying, "Oh, push with us, push with us." You need also to have a view of the battlefield. You need to understand and then. Uh, study, of course, what the enemy would do and what you would do if you were their situation. So if you like see some tanks like push up and then shoot and then pull back from the enemy side, don't get tempted from baiting because that's probably the bait or something else. So if players say, "Oh, we can push now," they're pulling back. Play cautious, then risk it. That's just what I want to say. Yeah. Because I experienced a lot of random players just intimidating, as you said, Sai, intimidating others to push with them because they saw the enemies are pushing and then pulling back quickly with either one or two tanks. Don't just, you need to have also an understanding of what you would do in this situation what would you do to flank your vehicle or what would they think like get your mind also to the enemy side what would you do in the situation you are in now yes i've been in a lot of tank combat even as an infantry just watching the tanks just push up and then get immediately pushed back because they got into a bait tank yes uh, on the subject of baiting glad you brought that up um you can be baited. There will be times where a light tank will just push up in front of an enemy column. That is always a bait. Like, if one tank goes above or in front of a column and pushes up, you can... That, that's just a bait. So just fire off a well, warning shot. Like, just get them to... Get them away. Don't, like, don't bother going after them. Don't bother going after the kill. Because as soon as you hit that tank, it'll start reversing back. And usually flanks like this, you can obviously see... Or, sorry, baits like this you can obviously see because there'll be a tank column not too far away from the bait tank that you can just uh, say, hey, let's... Uh, so you can tell when what's a bait and what's not. Uh, not always. I have seen one time where a single tank pushed up and then two tanks pushed against it. They got immediately killed by two of these AT something high velocity guns. That smelters, was hidden smelters. in bushes. Yes. Oh, those are smelters. I mean, you can never. Oh, that is something you literally cannot tell. Um, that's just yeah, that's I, a bad I, chance. So um, no but, matter what, you need to have the. Also, I feel your gut. Is it a good idea to push it in this battlefield and in this situation? Yes. That's the kind of thing, though. That's that's a surprise ambush. That's something one, you can never one, like. One thing where sometimes there'll be ambushes that you can just not see or could never predict. Um, just don't fall for him a second time. That's all I can say to that. Actually, uh, I could give some insight always... into predicting ambushes. Uh, sure. Sure, go ahead. I think we have time. So, for um, for drivers and commanders especially. Did you at the relic? At the relic? Okay. Uh, for drivers yeah, and commanders yes. especially, you gotta treat oh, no. um, sight line like things that can obstruct your sight line as potential threats. So like low stone walls, sandbag walls, um, trenches, rocks, anything, anything that an infantryman can hide behind, assume that there could be an infantryman hiding behind it. Unless you have like confirmation from your infantry that it's clear. 
Um, and that way you can, you know, predict ambushes from infantry. Um, sometimes they can hide field guns behind sandbags and stuff like that. Um, and of course, at night, you know, the darkness is an ever-present threat of infantry. Yeah, night is night combat was what I was going to talk about next. A bit of an excerpt about night combat. Uh, usually, when I do night combat, I say no, and I just sit behind the defenses and wait for um, daytime to come. That doesn't mean you have to sit behind the defenses and wait for it to wait for daytime. There's a lot of there's also been a lot of times where I've just been fighting in the middle of the night. Uh, this requires a lot of skill on the part of the commander and the driver to be, you know, have a lot of situational awareness. And uh, also how much infantry you have to support nighttime. you. It's nighttime. Correct. The commander and the driver have actually a very important role at nighttime in terms of nighttime combat. Spawn this, in at Vanguard. However, is mostly focused on one particular task. Uh, rather than using your um, radar, your task is to use the... Um, the map, specifically if there's watchtowers built in the area, you can often see infantry movements better on the map than you can with binoculars, uh, and so it's important for your commander to often check the radio networks in the area to ensure that uh, you're in the best possible situation. At night, this is critical for you as a driver to be able to look at the map while you're sort of sitting and doing nothing and to be able to engage enemy forces either by looking on the map to seeing how they move or fall back if there's too many enemy forces in the area and you need to move back. So generally, use your um, map to figure that out. This is also the only way you can figure out how whether there's field guns moving towards you. So it is doubly important that a um, commander makes sure to check that the... Um, make sure to check the map every now and again check to make sure there's no field guns that they can't see. The best way to do this is just to look on the map, see if you see any triangles, then take your binoculars and look at the spot where um, that triangle is, and if you don't see it, that's a field gun, stay away from it. Uh, so it's important that you as a commander are able to check that. But night combat, always be very cautious, because you can always get flanked, and even if you're checking the map, sometimes they could have stealth uniforms on, you just don't know. And so it's best that you I'd say it's best that you just don't fight at night, but in the situations where you have to fight at night, or the situations where you feel like you're uh, in the advantage and you can fight at night, this is what you do. I north. guess that's another important bit. If you fall back to repair, uh, which is going to happen often, that's just part of tank Um the, the driver gets out to repair, uh, along with the commander, the gunner stays in the tank. Uh, to engage any threats that may move to engage it. But also, if the driver gets killed by enemy infantry, it's the gunner's job to get in the driver's seat and fall back. Fall back to a safer location. Don't bother trying to shoot the people who are attacking you. Just get in the driver's seat and get it back. Your driver's already dead. Your commander's usually always dead. So just get in the driver's seat and get out. Yeah, mine check. Uh, you can't see my enemy mines. It's a good idea for the driver or the commander to get out of their tank and to uh, uh, Check for enemy mine placement and get put back in quickly. Yeah, that's a concrete BB. Yeah, you only have to pop out back. for a second to see the mine. Yeah, right. yeah, I think that about ends the lecture part of the tutorial. But all the rules apply for a tank to a um, to a push gun. The only difference is, is that the driver has to be incredibly aware of their situations and make sure that you don't actually get surrounded by enemy infantry and get stabbed oh. to death, which happens very often.